everyone, it's Rachel. Thank you for joining me in this video. So in this video, I have a little bit of a tutorial for you. So Cricut just recently rolled out their using convert to layers in design space. So you'll instantly convert and upload multicolored image into separate layers with the convert to layers feature. Um, so let's go ahead, I'm gonna show you how to do it um, using this cute little glue gun that I found in Canva. So I am going to create two additional tutorials and we'll be posting it to my channel. Um, one of how I use print and cut with design space and then another one of using print and cut with Canva and then also a third one um, just a quick tutorial on how to use Canva for pro and non-pro members. So those tutorials I'm actually working on this weekend. I'm not sure when they'll get posted just because of time of editing and and what have you. So it will be coming to my channel. Just note that I am currently working on it as we speak. So this is the first one I thought would be a good idea to start with because they just ruled this out, um, I believe March 27th. So, or there about maybe a week or two prior to that. I didn't, did not even hear about it until I saw someone post on Facebook and I was kind of intrigued by it. So I looked it up and, and uh, so I thought I would bring it to my channel and show y'all how to do this. Okay, so I'm not gonna give you the behind, behind the scenes of how I found this um, glue gun here just because that will be for a different video. I will show you guys how to do that, but I will show you how I'm gonna import it and then of course how to use it in Cricut Design Space. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit this, so I found this glue gun. I'm gonna hit this share button in the upper right corner and then I will hit download. And then under file type, you have a different, a few different options. You have JPEG, PNG, PDF standard, PDF print, SVG, MP4 if it's a video, and then a GIF. So um, from what I understand with Cricut, you don't wanna do SVG. Um, you wanna stick with PNG or JPEGs. Now, if you have an SVG, it should have the different layers anyways. So, cause I tested it out and it just, you know, it, it didn't, didn't work the way it was supposed to. I will tell you, this is not a foolproof plan of like, it doesn't do, Cricut doesn't do the best job to just decipher all the layers that's available. And also, you only get nine layers. I don't know why they capped it at nine. Um, you'll see what I'm talking about here in a moment. So I'm gonna click on PNG. Now, if you're a pro member, you have the option to, you'll see um, the little icon. Um, so those are for pro. So you're just gonna hit transparent background. Now, if you don't have a pro, if you're not a pro member, then um, there are websites. And I think Cricut Design Space will allow you to delete the background as well. So um, that's also available to you as well. So I'm gonna make sure it's a PNG and then I will hit download. Okay, so here is what it looks like. So I kind of already done it just because I wanted to have it all set for this video. But now that we have a new, uh, now that your canvas is opened, before we get into this, um, you know, applying the layers to an image, you want to make sure your design space is in beta. So what you're going to do is you're going to come up ne next to the profile image, you're going to click on that down arrow and then select settings. And then you're going to come into your general tab, which should already be defaulted in there. And then where it says application experience, you're, you will click on beta. Now, before you do this, if you have any cut files open, you're going to want to exit out of this, save it, and then go back into this and click on beta and hit done. Because what will happen is it's going to, it will restart the design space. So you may lose what you have worked on. So just make sure that you hit save. I'm already in beta because I wanted to test this out before I actually brought it to the channel. So mine's already set, so I don't need to click on anything. You will hit, you will hit done and then go through that process, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of that because I don't wanna make any changes. I will then hit upload, upload image, browse, untitled design, open, and it's untitled design because I didn't save the name in Canva, and that's why it's labeled as um, untitled design. So I'll hit continue, 
And if there is a background, so like this is what I was talking to you guys about, like if you don't have a pro membership, because you can use Canva for free, you just want to get all the images and all the bells and whistles that a pro member would have, So, which is removing the background. So this is where you would have to remove the background. So you would click here, like anywhere outside of this glue gun, and then there's another opening here, so you just click in between there. And you can zoom in to make sure that you accidentally don't click on, you know, your image or anything like that. Okay, so now that you've done all of that, hit apply and continue. And it also, just as an FYI, your image doesn't have to be like cartoon-like like this is. You can actually have like a, a genuine image, um, like a, you take a picture of something and then you can do that. The only thing with that is it's in beta, right? So they're testing it out. It's not foolproof. Cricut has its kinks, you know, they're always something wrong or they're always trying to work on something. And um, because I tried something different, a uh, different image and boy, did it do a bad job. So it's not, this is not going to be like perfect. So just keep that in mind. Um, but it is a pretty cool feature. So I tried to pick something that has a lot to it, but not too much. So I'm going to hit apply and continue. And then you have uh, three different options. You have the multi layers. And again, you won't see this if you're not in beta. You have your single layer, which is kind of like, you know, just one layer. And then you have your flat graphic. That's for your print and cut. So we're going to do multi layers. I'm going to click on that and hit continue. So where it says upload images, I'm going to first select the upload image type. So did you use, did you upload a clip, clip art or a photograph? So I'm going to try photo and the reason why I'm trying photo is because clip art is only showing up as two layers and this is not too bad, right? If I wanted like a little simplistic um, drawing or not drawing, but in a, um, a SVG file, I guess. So if you click on photo, it gives you more layers. Now, as I said before, it only gives you up to nine layers. Why nine's the magic number? You've got me. I'm sure that eventually they'll increase that. But I think because this is so complex, or it could be complex, that's why they only give you up to nine layers, okay? So also it says output style. So you have stacked in slice. So stacked basically creates a solid base layer that other layers stack on top of. So that's really best for iron on and HT or, or HTV paper and vinyl projects. And then, and then sliced you have it that creates layers that fit together like a puzzle piece without overlapping. So that's more so best for infusible ink projects. So stacked is like layer on top of layer. Slice just means, so for example, this would be one piece. This would be, you know, one piece. This would fit in with this darker purple. If you can tell there's like a lighter orange and a little bit of like a pink and then an orange. Those, so there's no layering on those. You're literally fitting it like a, a puzzle piece. So the, the best one that you really should click on, unless you're doing, um, infusible ink, click on stacked. And then also you have, you know, the amount of layers, like as I mentioned before, so you can kind of get rid of them. If I were you, I would just leave all nine on, assuming that there are nine. And then, you know, you can delete layers when you get into the canvas. So in the advanced area, um, you will see uh, tools that will further refine your image. So smooth, this one here, smooth textures and rounds borders to reduce any complex areas, reduce noise, basically reduces speckles and ultra fine details while preserving sharpness. And then simplify, that is basically simplifies complex images to improve the cutability. So, you know, something like this, I really can just leave everything um, the way it is. This is not too of a too much of a complex design. So I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that for, just leave that as is, okay? So the next you have preview, so you can kind of see what it looks like. And then you have, um, let's click on this icon here. This is going to show you all of your layers. And if I go in here, I don't think I can, if I click on there, it gets rid of some of those layers. 
and makes it a little bit easier. So I'm just gonna leave it on nine and that way I don't have to really worry about anything, okay? But this kind of shows you what layers you're, you're having right now. Okay, so I'm gonna hit continue. And then this is where you can you know, name it. I'm not gonna worry about that. And then I'll hit upload. So I already uploaded it. I'm not gonna worry about uploading it and bring it into design space. So here it is. I'm gonna go ahead and talk about this. There are a lot of layers that I just find that I really just don't need. Um, so I'm gonna kinda of look at this a little bit and then I'm gonna add some text. So looking here, I have my blank, and so I what I did was I measured the distance between here and here in order to get the size of my um, my guide. If you're not familiar with guides, you can make anything into a guide, and it just you can leave it in Design Space or on your canvas, and then you go hit Make it, and it won't show up. Okay, so. Um, that's what we will end up doing, okay? So um, with this being said, um, I'm, I'm so basically I created a guy. So let me go ahead and just do that for you all, just so in case you guys don't know. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and click on shape and then click on the square. I'm gonna move it over here and then I'm gonna click on the operation and switch it to guide, okay? So now I'm gonna make my 5.25, so I'm gonna unlock it. 5.25 and then this was I think what was it 8.9 no 6.8 okay so 6.8 and hit enter perfect and then of course I will then size this down so let me I think I um let me go ahead and send that to the back here send it to back okay so then I have this, I just basically sized it to the size of my blank here. Um, but I do want to kind of tear this apart a little bit because I, um, I basically don't want all of these layers. They look great, but I don't want to make this too complicated and I don't want to have to cut out some, a lot of vinyl and piece this all together. So I'm going to make my life a little bit easier. I'm going to stick with three pieces of vinyl here and I'll show you what they look like here in a moment. Um, so basically I'm going to hit, uh, I'm going to go ahead and what I'm going to do. Okay. So what I'll do is ungroup this and I'm going to get rid of the layers that I don't really need. So I don't really need this layer. So I'm going to hit, bring it over, hit delete. I don't need this layer. So I'm going to bring it over and, and hit delete. And let's see here. Do I want, nope, I don't want that layer either. And let's see here. I do want that layer. I don't want this purple, like darker purple layer. And then there's one more. I think that, um, let's see here. Yeah, I don't want this layer either. So I have my three layers together and I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and move that over. Okay. Um, so now what I'm going to do is, um, now that I have my three layers and the reason why I am keeping, in fact, actually I probably should keep that one there to keep it centered, right? Um, so I can go ahead and bring this back. Actually, it doesn't really matter if I bring it back or not. So that can stay over there. And then I'm simply just going to add my text. So I'm, I used, what's it called? Um, beautiful. Oops. Let me click on that again. And I wish it would show up when I click on it. Come on, Cricut. All right, it's called Beautiful Day Sans Duo. And that's what I did. And I added a curve. So um, I added a 25. So my text type is 53.83. And I added a, a 25 degree curve at the top and at the bottom. And that's how I, I did that, okay? So I'm using the same vinyl for um, the text in the main portion of the glue gun. So I'm gonna select all three, and if, if you don't know how to do that, you just simply click on it, click on your next part and hold shift, and I'm still holding that shift button, and I click on the third part. And then I can hit attach. So now they're all attached together. So when I go to print, I will have, uh, not print, but when I go to cut, I will have this layer, this layer and this layer. Now, if it's not too complex, which this one is not too complex, right? Um, you can make them all a single layer. And so let's go ahead and do that. I'll show you how to do that. 
so I'm gonna go ahead and change the layer just to black, okay, or this shade of black. And then I'll hit make it on the mat, hit continue. So in, in order to avoid feeding my mat in three different times, because I'm using three different colors, I made it all the same color. And then what I'll do is just put them in its specific corner. And then I'll put this color of vinyl here, this color of vinyl there, and this color of vinyl here. And then hit continue, set my settings, and then let it go through. I already cut them out. Um, so that way just to kind of speed up the process, but, um, yeah, so it's already cut out. And the only thing of it is if you're doing different materials, this is not going to be your best route. I did use glossy and matte. So you're going to see here in a moment. Actually, let me go ahead and flip the screen here. So the three uh, pieces of vinyl I will be using is this glitter vinyl from paper suit or 405, which is your, um, uh, uh, Hobby Lobby brand and then I'm using this matte opal vinyl and then I had some scrap uh, paper studio no 405 uh, gray so those are the three colors that I will be using and like I said I already cut them out I just wanted to kind of show you the colors that I will be using for this exercise go ahead and bring them over so the reason why I'm telling you or the, where I was leading with earlier is um, when you piece them all together, you want to make sure that they are not sure exactly what's on there. Um, you want to make sure that you know they're all the same. So we have two mats, and then we have this glossy. So and I, I, we'll see if it weeded well. I've done this before where I had matte and glossy at the same time, and it weeds out just fine. So let's go ahead and weed out all of our pieces here. Go ahead and peel this back. Perfect. Okay. And then let's go ahead and get this weeded out. This is from my Hobby Lobby um, haul. Well, my haul in general. I uh, will go ahead and link that video in the description box. Um, it says glitter, but it's like glossy glitter, so it's not your, it's not shimmer like. So um, this makes life a little easier because their shimmer vinyl is just not fun to to deal with. Let me tell you, it's like I need to fix my tea. Okay, now that I got the that big part weeded out um i don't think this weeded really well as much as i would have liked but that also could be because i used the matte setting i figured i have two of them that are matte one glossy i'll go with the one that uh you know just do the one i have a matte or since i have more matte than glossy i figured i would just do matte okay so that's not too bad so i'm gonna be kind of cautious about that okay so let me go ahead and get this part weeded out this is going to be my base layer and then the pink's going to get overlapped with this okay all right so it's going to go there and that's all i read it out okay so obviously I'm going to need this to be centered on my blank here, but this one has to go down first. So I got to think about how I want to do this. I think yeah, I'll just go ahead and um, use some transfer tape and transfer it on here, but I'm going to cut a large enough piece first. Now that I got the, the transfer tape all cut out, go ahead and move that and then I'm going to Go ahead and get this. Oh wait, I need I need this first. Okay. Okay. Let's go ahead and scrape that down. All right. 
peel this back really carefully. All right, so um, what I'm gonna do is I am going to get parchment paper. Because, let me move this out of the way here. Um, I don't want my vinyl to stick down onto my table. That would not be good. I was thinking to cut off some of this pink because I think that pink might show in the gray, but that's all right. So the reason why I'm using my parchment paper, as I mentioned before, I do not want it to accidentally line up. Um, in fact, I might need parchment paper for this part too. Okay, took a minute, but I think I might be a little bit off, but you know what? Uh, it's just the way it is. Okay, so I got that. i peel that back so I no longer need that. And then I think what I'll do is I'll burnish the back, not the front. Because I don't want my vinyl to stick to the table. Okay, so not perfect, slightly off but it's something I think I'm willing to, to live with. I did have to cut up or cut off the sides here because I kept on wanting to stick and make my life different or make it made my life a little difficult. So I'm gonna go ahead and just I did oh oh geez. And I want to cut off the top here because I don't want have to fuss with that either. So I'm really trimming that down to size here. Looks good to me. Okay, beautiful. And I'll try peeling that back. A little bubble. Sure, we'll work this way out. Fix that here in a moment. Perfect. I really would love for the, I hope this, I'm worried about that gray, honestly. I'm worried about that gray. Um. I'm worried that the pink is really going to push through that gray and make it look kind of weird, but, you know, we will, I will just have to be okay with it. All right. And then I will take that. Don't need that anymore. Bring that over here. that now you could have taken a, a step forward and um, sliced everything or you could have done that um, what is it called not stacked with the other option you could have done that so that way it would just fit in like a puzzle piece that would have been an option next time I think if I do this again I might try that great alternative if you, if you don't have prints and cut and you really like an image that's a JPEG this is a, a great alternative I do think there's things that they're gonna have to work out um, because it's not always gonna be the best especially when it's a really complex image it's definitely not gonna be an easy um, task in my opinion all right there we go I am absolutely loving the opals kind of little overshadow with that that pink glitter but overall I think that this came out awesome and I feel like all of us crafters has said that a time or two like I can totally make that you know it's like 20 50 dollars in the store but I'll spend 100 dollars in craft supplies to make it right it's just the fun you know it's two different there are two different hobbies buying craft supplies, and then actually crafting, right? All right, that is how you use using Convert to layers in design space. I hope this helped you out, and let me know if you end up trying it and how it went for you. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.